We are following breaking news out of Colorado, where the state attorney general announced that a grand jury has charged three officers and two paramedics in the 2019 death of Elijah McLean. The 23-year-old black man was in a neck restraint and injected with a sedative in a Denver suburb, stopped as he was walking home from the store, according to a city investigation. All five are charged with manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide. There are 32 charges in all. Some of McLean's last words, I'm just different, have become a rallying cry at protests in his name. Joining me now, NBC News correspondent Gabe Gutierrez and Reverend Al Sharpton, host of Politics Nation and president of the National Action Network. Gabe, uh, talk to me a little bit about these charges. And is it unusual that not just the officers, but also the paramedics are charged in this case? Chris, it's uh, very unusual. And you'll remember that this case actually, you know, Elijah McLean died in uh, 2019, in late 2019, but it wasn't until the death, uh, the murder of George Floyd uh, the following year uh, that this case really began to get national attention as more and more people took to the streets and more and more people protested. And no charges were filed initially, but that increased pressure uh, did essentially reopen the investigation. And so now, uh, you know, this uh, this is a, a, a result uh, that had been uh, it is welcomed by Elijah McLean's family. It's such a heartbreaking case, uh, Chris. You know, this young man, 23 years old, while walking back from a convenience store, was stopped uh, by police. And his family had said that he really had no reason uh, to be stopped. And, and on top of that, he was wrestled to the ground. And yes, these paramedics are now being charged uh, because police say that they uh, injected uh, Elijah McLean with that powerful sedative uh, ketamine uh, that police uh, say uh, contributed to his death. Now, Chris, I want to also mention that we have just heard a response from the police union, which just released a statement and still, despite this 32 count indictment, has called the response to this case, quote, a hysterical overreaction. And the Aurora Police Union says our officers did nothing wrong, the union maintains. And sadly, Mr. McLean died due to a combination of exertion due to his decision to violently resist arrest and a pre-existing heart condition. Of course, Elijah McLean's family and many activists involved with this case say that that's uh, completely outrageous. They say that he should not have been stopped in the first place. This is certainly a very emotional case. And again, now the breaking developments that uh, five officers and uh, paramedics now charged with uh, various charges. Chris? So, Rev, uh, I want to get your take on the significance of these charges, but also that statement by the police association. Well, I think the significance is that had it not been for the family and the activists there in Aurora, uh, there would not have probably been a case because the governor gave this to a, a special prosecutor. The attorney general did the case. And it was felt, as it is in many cases that I've been involved in with National Action Network, that if you leave it to the local prosecutors who have this kind of uh, bonding relationship with local police, they will not do a real investigation. And when we see this not only indict the police officers, but the paramedics, uh, I think it's because of how the case was handled, because of the diligence and pressure of local activists that stayed on it. Yes, it was given some oxygen by the George Floyd movement that all of us were involved in, but they stayed on it locally. And I think that this is, is, a, is a thing that shows that the pressure does matter. We must have a society where you don't need pressure to get equal justice. To think a young man goes to a convenience store to get iced tea for his brother and he gets killed unarmed, be, be given a sedative that he should have never been given by paramedics. And you have to do all this to just get an indictment. And then now the police union has the contempt for the loss of human life, blaming him on uh, being uh, killed by police, saying, I can't breathe, I'm just different. It's, it shows what goes on in this country too often. And that's why we need national federal law to stop this. You know, Rev, I was taken by the fact that a, the, a lawyer for Mr. McLean's father said that he, Mr. Mosley, wept. He wept when he heard the news about the indictments today. 
What does justice even look like here? He was never accused of doing anything wrong when he when he was stopped. He wasn't doing anything wrong. No, justice would have been him not being, you can't bring his life back. But what it does uh, give is a measure of to the family that his death will be something that could be used to prevent others being treated uh, uh, in, by law enforcement like this that break the law. We should expect law enforcement to protect the Elijah McClains, not to kill them. Here's a young man was suspected of what? Of walking home? Yes, he had on uh, a covering because it is cold in Colorado. And because he was walking home and the color of his skin, he could be killed and backed up by paramedics that would over-medicate him. This is the fear that too many lives in our community, too many families have. So when Elijah McClain's father wept, he wept with the kind of, of, of demonstration that too many of our families have, is it reminds him of the pain of losing his son, and it gives him the relief that at least this time he may get justice. Now, you still have to have a trial. and still have to face a jury. We just went through with George Floyd and other cases. It wasn't until the very end that we even knew then that policemen would be convicted. So this is far from over, but at least we have a beginning. Again, that breaking news, five people charged in his death. Thank you so much, Rev. Thank you, Gabe Gutierrez. We appreciate it.